All right. So now this is the third part of the obsessive compulsive disorder video and we'll be talking about the etiology from the different perspectives. So there are five predominant five pa actually four. Sorry. There are four predominant perspectives that attempt to explain why a person develops obsessive compulsive personality disorder. The first one is psychodynamic. So again when we say psychodynamic we think Freudian and Neo-Freudian psychologists. So how do the Neo-Freudians and the Freudians talk about obsessive compulsive disorder? So they explain it using, of course, psychodynamic concepts such as the id and defense mechanisms. So what happens is your id comes up with uh, thoughts and urges and images that are anxiety inducing or unwanted and what happens is you try to battle them through defense mechanisms so the following defense mechanisms are supposedly used one is isolation disowning the unwanted thought oh that thought is not me that's not mine that's not who i am okay so that's isolation the next is undoing so what we do is when we think bad thoughts we want to try to undo that so it's like erasing the bad thought and how do we erase that by performing a behavior to cancel out the unwanted thought so for example if there is a persistent thought in your head that uh, you might grab people's private parts. You want to grab people's private parts. It makes you feel so anxious and so, gui so guilty. And so what you do is you perform a compulsion to cancel that thought out. So that can be in the form of repeating a prayer or let's say counting to keep your mind occupied. The other one is reaction formation. So where you take on a lifestyle that opposes your unacceptable impulses. So for example, if let's say you have thoughts that are very obsessions that are very sexual in nature, sometimes what we do is we try to cleanse quote unquote ourselves. And so what happens is uh, an example of a compulsion could be washing the self or taking a shower. And you can do that repeatedly and persistently and rigidly. So you have to take how many showers in a day for you to feel clean and for you to feel guilt-free. Okay, so those are the kinds of explanations that the psychoanalytic or psychodynamic perspective give about OCD. On the other hand, from a cognitive perspective, so remember when you say cognitive, we're talking about thinking. So the, the, the cognitive psychologists try to explain OCD from the perspective of what is the thought process going on in the person's mind. So they have what they call a thought action fusion. Um, you, you must have heard this recently or you must have seen this in some of the pub mats lately. You are not your thoughts. And this is a question I asked you in one of our previous subjects already. Are you your thoughts? But when you think about something, okay, when you think about something, does your thought define who you are? Okay. So for someone with OCD, there is the assumption that when you think about something or even you think about uh, an activity, that is equivalent to actually doing the activity so when you think about something that's bad so when a, a negative thought comes into your head such as for example sexual thoughts and you perceive that as something that is negative that's bad having that thought causes you to feel very guilty because you think having thoughts like that are just as bad as actually doing it okay so let's say for example the persistent thought comes into your head uh, I'm going to kill I'm going to kill I'm going to kill I'm gonna kill somebody wanna kill somebody okay? so let's say something like that occurs persistently in your mind so can you imagine how disturbing that would be for someone with OCD, it's possible that that causes them extreme guilt. 
because they think that who they are is tied to their thoughts and so just the thought of wanting to kill somebody is just as bad as actually killing or hurting somebody okay and that is supposedly something that you learn from childhood diba? because we are very often taught in childhood that no you're not supposed to think of that because that's bad okay so what happens is a thought that supposedly just fleeting so sana in passing lang yon becomes an obsession it it becomes more important than it actually is because you start to feel so many emotions around it and now you can't get it out of your mind and so you feel a strong sense of responsibility to get rid of that thought and how do you try to get rid of that thought by neutralizing unwanted thoughts in the form of a compulsion so what happens is you get locked up in that cycle of having these unwanted thoughts these negative thoughts that you feel so guilty and ashamed of and instead of the thoughts just passing through because you know you're you know they're just thoughts for you they become so important and you then make it some sort of a personal mission to eliminate those thoughts from you and undo those thoughts in you through the form of compulsions okay so that could be like um and that's also why as you've seen here stronger religious belief is often linked to ocd because we know for example in a lot of religions there are a lot of things that we are taught to not do and not think of right? you're not supposed to do this you're not supposed to uh, consider blah 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 so what happens is when you grow in with the orientation of being guilt-ridden it becomes very easy for a thought to become something so big in your mind and you get so obsessed with it that you have to try to counteract that in order to eliminate the sense of guilt okay and so it becomes a cycle that you follow in your head the next one is the behavioral perspective which is very similar to the cognitive perspective except that the focus is just in the mind here uh, the focus is on the behavior and looking at it from the framework of a behaviorist if you remember when we talk about especially operant conditioning we talk about a b and c a is your antecedent b is the behavior c is the consequence so when you say a these are obsessions so meaning take for example you're at home you're watching tv on a normal weekend and then an obsession enters your mind a thought comes into your mind now since the thought is not something that you like there is an anxiety associated with the thought so remember that in behaviorism your behavior then follows what is your response when something occurs okay so an obsession comes in to your mind and you try to respond by behaving in a certain way in this case performing a compulsion okay and what happens is when you perform the compulsion you forget you lose the obsession and so you the anxiety disappears you the consequence is that you feel relieved after performing the compulsion and so what happens is you learn that by doing the compulsions you can eliminate the obsession the unwanted thoughts so you learn that via conditioning and as you keep repeating it over and over you develop that into something that is almost second nature to you you it becomes quite of a quote unquote a habit so what you do is you're falsely reinforcing the performance of the compulsions instead of learning 
how to really just ignore the obsessive thought until it just goes away. So if you look at the flow chart, first you have a disturbing thought that arises. What if I left the door unlocked? Now, leaving the door unlocked attach, has an attached anxious feeling to it because that means you might be in danger. Okay, so there's anxiety and physical symptoms. The fear start to form like, oh no, if I leave the door unlocked, that means I might be at risk. So what you do is to combat that fear, you perform a behavior. You go to your front door, uh, you, you unlock, you check if it's locked, if it's lock then you unlock it to make sure you lock it again and then you unlock it and you lock it again so maybe three four or five times and then you remember oh you have a back door and then you go to your back door you unlock you lock you unlock and lock just to make sure just enough so you can be sure that it's actually locked okay so when you've done that for quite some time you feel relieved okay so now i'm sure that uh it's locked Okay. And so what happens is the, the disturbing thought momentarily retreats. And it's important to remember this. It momentarily retreats because at some point, the obsessive thought is going to just come back. And what happens is when it comes back, your brain has already learned. Right? So from, from conditioning, you've already learned that what gives you a sense of relief is performing the compulsions and so you do it over and over again and voila you have a pattern of behavior that has become dysfunctional and distressful for you okay so that is the behavioral perspective